Welcome back to this Let's Play of The Last Remnant. Last time we uh, followed up on some dead leads and failed to find our sister. Trading syndicate and anti-remnant terrorists. Lovely. And to think, while we were fighting beastmen, those things were doing as they pleased. We are already looking into this, Lord David. You should not trouble yourself further. More importantly, we have learned of something else similarly troubling. Multiple sources have reported seeing a bright light flash across the sky. A flash? Every so often, remnants emit light. It's called luminescence. The light could have been luminescence from the Valeria heart, or the gay bog reflected on the clouds. Ah, but the Valeria heart and the gay bog are bound. They have not seen a luminescence in a long, long while. Then maybe a different remnant. That light moved as if it possessed a mind of its own. Very different from luminescence, to be sure. Then a flying monster. So it would seem. Where was the light headed? Towards Dilmore. Fine. You four take Rush, and head to Dealmore immediately. It seems we're up against a flying remnant. No way! That's... that's impossible! The Academy's research on newly discovered remnants may be ongoing, but they have never announced a remnant with the power of flight. No. It must be a remnant. No other possibility makes sense. Now we're up against a group that has its hands on an unknown remnant. Choose your battles with discretion. Retrieving Arena is top priority. Yes, yes my lord. lord. Don't sweat it, Dave. We're the good guys. We'll definitely get Arena back. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> I think facepalm is the best response there, Dave. Or Agent David, sorry. And now we have four squads, or four real characters in our party other than Rush. Um, all five of these characters will eventually join your party, though everybody for now is just joining temporarily. The only character who's officially in our party is Rush himself. Um, for the, uh, the rest of these guys, well, these soldiers are really useless, but the rest of them it's still worth gaining uh, skills with them. But. Our target, for now, is Dilmore. And we'll come back to Dilmore a couple times, too. Though not as many times as we'll come back to Rebellia. Rebellia Castle and Gaslin Caves each have two additional sub-areas. Um, two additional maps, um, which we'll come back to on other side quests. Dilmore has leads to another area, but it is not an area in, it, in itself. So, let's head in. That texture pop-in thing is a sort of annoying, but... And, uh, Torgal talks here about, uh, your talisman, and he says you can use it outside of combat, too, and why he knows more about it than you do, I don't know. But, uh, this is one of the, the cute little tricks that's going to allow me to avoid fighting basically every enemy in the game that I don't want to fight. And, uh... Time shift is useful for both making big chains of monsters to fight and also for avoiding fighting monsters. If you uh, actually walk by a monster while time shifted like that, you will uh, flag it as aggressive, which you know is good, for, I guess, if you really want to fight it. But um, if you uh, also just avoid it entirely, you can use time shift to get around it. So if you want to create a big chain of monsters chasing you, then uh, it's really useful. I don't, there's not a whole lot of purpose to doing that, uh, unless you're trying to get some of the, the rarer drops, which do depend on um, you uh, get, you know, fighting a lot of enemies at once. Essentially, instead of like 1% plus 1%, it's like 
1% plus 1% equals 5% or something. Anyway, um, we're also going to use it to just run right by these guys. And they're all aggressive now, chasing us, of course. If you actually get back up to full on the time shift gauge, and then time shift again, you will uh, lose lock on all everything. But obviously, if you go into a cutscene, you also lose lock, so... This was once a prosperous town. It was centered around the remnant of peace, the rubber soul. Was there a war? No. The one the remnant was bound to passed away. The world is filled with countless remnants. No two look alike or share the same power. However, they all have one thing in common. And that is? When a remnant is not bound to a soul, it calls forth disastrous misfortune. This calamity is known as the Collapse. Shh! Hide yourselves! I see them. Two men. And a dark-haired little girl. I guess they call him Rush for a reason. No offense to Russians. This must be our cue. Our cue to avoid having to actually animate our lips by hiding it by the I don't know what's rubber about that. I don't know what's soul about it either. Rubber soul is sort of confusing. Because you think, is it a shoe? What's, what's up with that? Anyway, we get attacked by angry people. It's triggered another collapse! These things are fairly easy. Um, I don't know if this is me, my sort of avoiding, uh, having gaining ranks on things, if that's starting to pay off, but anyway. It's not obvious until a little bit later, but uh, there will come a point at which it's a, enemies start uh, becoming quite difficult, uh, mostly because of the special attacks they used. Um, and I believe that Battle Rank has a fairly strong effect on... It's either um, AP, you know, essentially how fast the enemies get AP to use special attacks, or just the frequency at which they choose to use them. Now, you'll notice that uh, the hit points of my groups are much larger. The hit points of, of a group are just, you know, the hit points of everybody included in it. Um, and unless an enemy is using a special attack, all of the uh, party members have to die in order to uh, actually uh, have any member of the group die. Which is kind of, I don't know, feasible, convenient, something. Um, because you can uh, have these groups that are much more survivable because they don't uh, have to deal with uh, dying quite so much. Later, much later in the game, um, you will run into a slighter, slight problem where uh, enemies will start using area of effect attacks, which do damage based on the number of targets in the Union, 
And then having big groups becomes much less useful. Having big groups is also somewhat of a disadvantage from the standpoint of you're going to get deadlocked and uh, flanked a lot. Um, but early in the game, you want essentially big groups rather than lots of groups. Later in the game, once everything starts using lots of area of effect attacks, you really don't have any uh, incentive to have really big groups other than just if it makes sense for other reasons. There are a couple of special attacks and such that require you to have large groups. The main boss thing here doesn't actually attack you until you attack it, which is convenient because I'm not actually going to attack it until everything else is dead, and then when you're fighting just it, it's... This is actually sort of a more annoying enemy than most in that it has, uh, it has this natural gas attack there, uh, which does poison. Um, it's not 100% hit, but... Uh, uh, it's often enough to be annoying. For status ailments, the uh, second skill in the uh, Remedy tree, Restore, uh, oh, sorry, this Remedy is the second, Restore is the first, um, will remove status ailments, most status ailments. There are some status ailments that are truly obnoxious, uh, and many of them, there's a couple of them that can't actually be removed by that skill. The most annoying is a sort of a charm ability, which you essentially can only cure it by killing the Union and then bringing it back. And this is going to end up in a long string of cutscenes, so I will probably actually end the video uh, here rather than continuing through. And refund. Alright. Sometimes you'll capture monsters, and uh, it's, you have essentially two options with them. You can either sell them as captured monsters, or you can break them up for parts. I'm going to break at least... well, I'm going to break up one of these. Uh, two of these, sorry, and then s save the last one. I'm hoping that I have enough um, money to, for something that's coming up. If I don't, I might have to get creative. But uh, selling items generally won't get you very much. Captured monsters are your big income, at least as designed. There are a couple of sort of, I don't know, exploits that I'm going to do as far as there, there's a mining system, uh, and I'll use that to get money. Since all these herb-based skills require um, money, essentially, to use, because you have to keep buying herbs, it uh, gets kind of expensive, actually. And the, the herbs are actually one of the cheaper ones. Shards, later on, I mean, you're paying like a thousand gold each time you use a, an attack. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here, and uh, next time we'll be back in Athlone for some more cutscenes.